Before I begin, I would just like to make the point that I cannot draw, so this is going to be horrible. But here is my attempt at drawing my life. My parents met on May 2nd, 1986 at my aunt's wedding in Pompton Plains. They dated for four years before getting married the summer of June 1990. And there they are. Little did they know they were going to have seven children and of course one of them being me. That's right, seven. Four girls and three guys. We range from 21 to 5 years of age, and as third overall, my position comes with several benefits but also many disadvantages. Nothing in life can compare to growing up in a large family. As you can probably guess, we mostly travel in a pack. Attracting stares is something that we're really good at. Friends and strangers notice us and are either awed by the controlled chaos that we bring or they're overwhelmed and cross to the other side of the street. That said, I would not change one thing about being raised as one of seven children. Once people discover the size of my family, I get the usual shower of questions. Are you Catholic or Mormon? How big is your house? What do your parents do? What's your food bill? Share a bedroom? What do you drive? While I will not bore you with the standard responses, I will say that living in a large family has caused me to recognize that there are certain challenges we deal with more than others. As a member of my family, you are surrounded 24-7. The concept of privacy does not exist. However, there are some advantages to living in a crowd. Seven kids makes for a lot of suspects. While an only child with a messy room or two siblings with a broken window have a very slim chance of getting off the hook, covers less of a problem with many other sketchy characters around. I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Okay, there we go. My brother isn't crippled, guys. So, when my mom gets angry, I didn't do it, usually works well. Mothers of large families rarely have time to question. And of course, there I am, getting blamed by my brothers for something that I didn't do. The restaurant scene, and that would be a cowlick if anyone's wondering. So have you ever gone to a restaurant with a group of your friends and been forced to wait for a large table to open up for your party? They tell you your wait time and you usually leave because you have no patience and didn't have lunch that day. Try dealing with this on a regular basis. Great staffs love dragging tables together to accommodate us. Thankfully though, my mom cooks dinner almost every night so we can avoid this chaos and save money as well. The ferals are here. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to draw a 12 passenger van. Note the image is not to scale. With such a large family, attention is something we receive in amounts proportional to our size. When we unload our troop of children, we attract more stares than most. No, we are not the football team, a group of traveling musicians, or a clown act. We are simply seven children and young adults who had to fight more than others for hot water and food before coming to school in the morning. Watch out for that lamppost, bud. Okay, that never actually happened before, but they always stare. Diversity and self-image. Personalities take shape in reference to those around you. So with many unique personalities under one roof, my family is like a village. In no particular order, we have a beauty queen, the rebel of the family, the troublemaker basically, 
the one that doesn't listen. We also have the Charmer, AKA the ladies man. A clown, the one that doesn't mean to be funny, but usually is without knowing it. We also have the lazy one. <laughs> I'm not naming names. And the roof is not big enough, so I'm gonna make it bigger. We also have an overachiever, the one who gets straight A's without having to study that hard. And we have the spoiled baby of the family. Competitiveness. There are always enough people for a game, whether basketball, soccer, or even a board game. There is always team play. You can't just beat a team. You have to leave a lasting impression in their minds so they never want to see you again. That said, we measure ourselves against one another and live with the knowledge of who can run the fastest, eat the most, read the fastest, or achieve the highest grades. Everything is a contest and we all know the score. We even compete for our parents' attention and favor. Sibling rivalry is a part of life and makes us aware of skills and limitations. Support systems. Despite the differences between us, the incessant competition for identity and resources and the disadvantages of our overarching collective identity, the greatest blessing of a large loving family is the support structure that invisibly connects us. My dreams and goals are theirs too. When I have doubts, it helps to know there are loved ones ready to cheer, push, encourage, or catch me when I reach beyond myself. The close bond we share has fostered in me associated values such as flexibility, creativity, humility, and the ability to negotiate. Also, a sense of responsibility. The sibling bond is lifelong. If one of us tries out for American Idol or runs for mayor, he or she can count on nine votes in the least. How many others could say that? I am a product of my family. As I move to college, I will carry my awareness of the value of community with me. Growing up in my larger than average family is something that I will always appreciate. I am Emma Farrell and that's kind of my life so far.